Chapter 8 Geppetto makes Pinocchio new feet and sells his own coat to buy him a primer. As soon as the marionette had satisfied his hunger, he began to cry and grumble because he wanted new feet. But Geppetto, in order to punish him for all his naughtiness, let him cry and complain for half a day. Then he said, Why should I make you new feet? So that you may escape from home again. I promise, said the marionette, sobbing, that from now on I'll be good. All children, when they want something, tell the same story, replied Geppetto. I promise to go to school and study and do my best as a good boy should. All children, when they want something, say the same thing. But I'm not like other children. I'm better than all of them, and I always tell the truth. I promise you, Daddy, that I shall learn a trade and be the staff and comfort of your old age. Geppetto tried to look very severe, but his eyes were full of tears and his heart was full of sadness when he saw his poor Pinocchio in such a dreadful state. He did not say another word, but, taking his tools and two little pieces of seasoned wood, he set to work as hard as he could. In less than an hour the feet were ready. Two well-shaped, nimble, swift little feet that might have been carved by a great artist. Then Geppetto said to Pinocchio, Shut your eyes and go to sleep. Pinocchio shut his eyes and pretended to be asleep. And while he did so, Geppetto, with some glue melted in an eggshell, fastened the feet in place. And he did it so neatly that no one could even see where they were joined together. As soon as Pinocchio discovered he had his feet again, he jumped down from the table where he was lying and began to gamble and dance around the room, nearly mad with joy. Now, to prove to you how grateful I am, said Pinocchio to his father, I want to go to school at once. What a good boy. But if I'm going to school, I must have some clothes. Geppetto, who was poor and had not a farthing in his pocket, made Pinocchio a suit out of flowered paper, a pair of shoes out of bark from a tree, and a cap out of bread. Pinocchio ran to look at himself in a basin of water, and he was so pleased with himself that he said as he strutted about, I look exactly like a gentleman. Yes, indeed, answered Geppetto. But remember, it is not fine clothes that make a gentleman, but clean clothes. By the way, speaking of school, added Pinocchio, there's still something I must have the most necessary of all. And that is? I have no primer. That's right. But how shall I get one? That's easy. Go to the bookseller and buy one. And the money? I haven't any. Neither have I, added the good old man sadly. Pinocchio, although he was usually very cheerful, became sad too. For poverty, when it is real poverty, destroys all joy even in children. Wait, Geppetto cried suddenly and, jumping up, he put on his old coat, full of holes and patches, and ran out of the shop. In a little while he was back again, with a primer in his hand for Pinocchio. But the poor man was in his shirt sleeves, and it was snowing outside. Where is your coat, Daddy? I have sold it. Why did you sell it? Because it made me too warm. Pinocchio understood this answer instantly, and he was so overcome by the feelings of his good heart that he threw his arms around Geppetto's neck and kissed him again and again.